Yeah, it's tough because as an entrepreneur, you can be seduced into the idea that you're creating this new product and everybody's just going to love it. And you're a hundred times better than the, the alternative. And the reality is, is like, if you're inventing a new product, you're competing against the status quo. Every business is unique, but the ups and downs we experience as we launch and run our businesses are pretty similar. We're Harmon Brothers, the team behind Pooping Unicorns and other weird but successful video ads you've probably seen. We help businesses grow through unforgettable video marketing, and we're no stranger to tricky situations. In fact, we embrace them. The goal of this podcast is to show how your crappy circumstances could be the golden opportunity that leads to your next success. You're watching Poop to Gold. Welcome back to From Poop to Gold. This is Benton Crane, your co-host. And today I am joined by Brian Clayton. Welcome to the show, Brian. Hey, thanks for having me on. Great to be here. Hey, so Brian is the founder and CEO of GreenPal. Uh, which has been called the Uber of lawn care. What does that mean, Brian? Yeah, so if you're a homeowner and you need to get your grass cut, rather than calling around all over on Craigslist or Facebook, you can just download our app and hire somebody to come mow your yard the same day or the next day. So it works kind of like the Uber for lawn mowing. You just sign up, you'll get quotes, you can read reviews about who you want to work with, and just hire them by pushing a button rather than leaving a bunch of voicemails everywhere. Is it available nationwide? Yeah, nationwide. We've been at this seven years. Uh, when we started the company seven years ago, we actually spent three years in Nashville, Tennessee, just trying to figure it out, trying to get the, the experience right, trying to nail it and dial it in, and then slowly began to expand. And now we are nationwide. We're in every major city in the United States. And now we're distributing the platform into all the nooks and crannies throughout the United States and, and all the smaller, uh, smaller mid markets. Brilliant. And how's it going so far? It's going good. We're doubling every year. We've doubled every year for the past five years. COVID luckily has helped us. Uh, you know, companies like Postmates, uh, DoorDash, Uber Eats, they're all having banner gears through this mm -hmm. like contactless, frictionless, uh, invisible commerce. And we kind of have ridden that trend. You know, uh, typically you'd have to like walk the lawn with your lawn guy when you hire them or maybe pay them cash or leave a check under the mat or some kind of stuff like that. And so for us, we solve all those problems. We offer like a, a frictionless, invisible way to hire somebody to come mow your yard without having to meet them. So that's that's actually helped us, luckily. And so we've doubled this year. Uh, we have over 200,000 homeowners that use the platform to get their grass cut. And we're going to do $20 million in sales this year. Is it just lawn mowing or does it include other landscaping services, weeding, pruning, tree trimming, that sort of stuff? It's a good question. So one of my philosophies and like uh, ethos in, in business is that you have to focus. You have to be the best in the world at one thing. So we have focused just on lawn mowing. Now, that said, when you sign up, you can order lawn mowing. And then after that goes well, you can book them for the rest of the season. And after you've gotten kind of set up with a good lawn mowing service, you can then layer on other services that you're probably going to need, like shrub pruning, weed removal, mulch, seed, fertilizing, all these things you can layer on with your service provider after you get booked up for the lawn mowing. But what we have found is if we try to like throw all that stuff on the front door, it just kind of the value proposition gets watered down and people get confused. We like to keep things simple where like an eight year old can yep. order a lawn mowing service on Green Pal. Yeah, you say too much and you end up saying nothing at all. Exactly. So uh, so what's your backstory? How did you end up founding Green Pal? You know, talking to you today on, on the 20 years of, of entrepreneurship, business ownership, I've never had a job, never had a boss. I was forced into entrepreneurship by my father on a hot summer day back in the mid 90s when he made me go mow the neighbor's yard. Uh, I was hitting him up for a pair of soccer cleats that I wanted and, and uh, he wasn't going to give me the money. He said, hey, listen, I got a job for you to do. You can go cut the neighbor's grass for 20 bucks made me do it and, and luckily he did because something about that something about owning my own business and making as much money as i wanted to make so long as i was willing to work hard it just stuck with me and by the end of that summer i had like 10 12 customers and i just kept growing that business little by little and all through college i i, I used it as a way to pay for, for my school and over a 15 year period of time, I grew that into one of the largest landscaping businesses in the state of Tennessee. I got it to over 150 employees. Wow. Uh, we hit $10 million in revenue with that company. And I got that, and that business was acquired by one of the largest landscaping companies in the United States. And so taking that business from just me and a push mower to 150 employees, I learned a lot through trial and error on how to, how to help business works and how to do it the wrong way and how to do it the right way. 
I sold that company. I effectively retired when I, you know, I was 32 years old and I retired. I didn't have to work anymore. And that was cool. And I was just able to kind of do what I wanted to do. And, uh, after I kind of sat idle for a few months, I was like, okay, I have learned something about myself. I am wired to love business. I'm wired to be in the game. And so I need to start the next thing. And that idea was simple for me. I, I knew that a, an app needed to exist for what I just spent the last 15 years doing. I saw what a, you know, Airbnb and Uber and Lyft were doing for mm-hmm. traditional local base, you know, physical, uh, old school type of commerce. And, and so I thought, okay, you know, somebody needs to build this app and I'm going to be the guy to do it. And I recruited two co-founders and we went to work. Luckily for me, I didn't know how hard it was going to be. I was naive. And so I kind of didn't know what I didn't know. And so I was kind of seduced into the game because if I know how, how hard it was going to be, I never would have done it. But luckily I yes. did and, and just stuck with it. And here we are. We're a seven year overnight success. Yeah. Sometimes it's a blessing to, uh, to have that level of ignorance so that we don't know what we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You can be used to your advantage. Now, the, the, the trick is just to win by not giving up. And for me, you know, the first three years were really, really tough for this business for a few reasons. One, building a a tech enabled marketplace is really hard. Uh, Mm -hmm. And we also didn't raise any outside capital. And so that was hard. And then on top of all that, I didn't know the first thing about how to build software. I didn't know how to write code. My two co-founders didn't either. And so we were kind of just like shooting in the dark. We we paid a, a development shop in Nashville to build the first version. Uh, like $150,000 off on credit cards and stuff like that. And it was a total, it was a total flop, total failure. Like nobody, nobody wanted to use it. So we we were confronted with the reality that we had to learn how to write code and build the second version all at the same time. And that took three years. And uh, you know, the only thing that really kind of kept me going and and my co-founders was that, you know, we had little wins, we had little evidence that it was working. And then for me personally, you know, it was my best idea. I was going to work on my best idea. I was all, going to be working on something and green pal was and still is my best idea i got so i'm just going to keep working on this yeah fight for it the whole theme of this podcast poop to gold is that every successful person has had to you know overcome enormous challenges sometimes really crappy situations and quite frankly many of our listeners are probably right now in 2020 going through their own poop moments right you know a lot of businesses have been turned upside down take us back in time to a really, really dark moment in your journey. Kind of one of those moments where you're, where you just didn't know how you were going to get through it. Do we have like two or three hours? <laughs> <laughs> <I'll> p- <laughs> We're going, we're going cliff note style. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, a couple poop to gold moments uh, in the first business. I remember one Sunday night, uh, I payroll was the next morning. It was $220,000 and I had $18,000 in the bank. And so that was a poop to gold moment. Uh, it was a moment where I had to really understand that I screwed up the problem. Uh, I you know, in business, you get exactly the business you deserve as the owner. And I screwed up somewhere and, uh, I couldn't make payroll. And so it was a poop to gold moment because I had to really figure out, okay, how am I going to rally my team and like get everybody together and say, okay, listen, we can't make payroll. I promise we're going to make everybody whole and here's how we're going to do it. It's going to take a few weeks and we made the necessary cuts and necessary sacrifices. And, 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 you know, a year or two later, the business was actually better for it. So you've got to pull your whole team together and you've got to tell them, uh, by the way, you're not getting your paycheck, but yeah. hang with me. I've got a plan here. Tell me what you're feeling in that moment, like the hours leading up to that conversation with your employee. What's going on inside of you? Yeah, it, you're scared. Uh, you're humbled. You're humiliated. You don't know what's going to happen. And so for me, it was almost like, well, I don't have a negotiated alternative. I have to like rally everybody around this idea that we're all going to, to contribute like a, like a mutual sacrifice to get through this. And so I just went in there and, and with the most sincerest, like earnest way I could, I, I just described the situation and how I screwed up and took ownership of it and what I was going to do as the leader of, of this company with 100 plus employees, how we're going to fix it together. And out of that, I say, anybody that doesn't want to stay, I understand we, we will still make you whole, but this is what it's going to take for us to work out of this. And only like one or two people left. 
And so uh, it galvanizes us as a team. It made us a stronger company. It made us leaner and more efficient. But, you know, what, you know, driving into the office that morning, I, I, I threw up, you know, I knew that that I was screwed that if, if everybody walked out, yeah, because you know, everybody's expect, everybody's got bills to pay. Uh, everybody is expecting to get a paycheck that day. And not only are you not gonna be able to pay them, but you still are asking them to work that week. And, you know, in, in that type of business, it's, it's really, really, really hard work. Uh, the landscaping business is, is, is hard, uh, physical labor. And so, uh, you're asking them, yeah. And by the way, uh, need you to like put in a 10 hour day today. So, Really tough, but you know, it was a growing experience for me as a leader to learn how to lead through a crisis like that. And also understand that like, there's a difference between working in your business and on your business. Mm -hmm. And I had to really take time and figure out ways to work on the business, figure out where I was screwing up with the unit economics of the business and how I got us to the point where we couldn't make payroll. And that was like, honestly, like a Saturday or a Sunday thing. And so for the next year, everybody saw me coming in on a Saturday and Sunday. So they couldn't be too pissed off at me because at least I'm trying you know and so it was a it was a combination of just growing humility owning it being visible getting in there rolling up your sleeves and doing everything you can to work it out is is why it worked out brian you're you're pioneering a new space but it's also disrupting you know a a a pre-existing space where everyone has somehow got their lawn mowed before and now you've got to come in and compete with that how do you differentiate yourself in a crowded marketplace yeah, it's tough because as an entrepreneur, you can be seduced into the idea that you're creating this new product and everybody's just going to love it. And you're a hundred times better than the, the alternative. And the reality is, is like, if you're inventing a new product, you're competing against the status quo. And so even like an example, like the QWERTY keyboard that we have, there's like 20 different variations of the keyboard that are 10 times more efficient but nobody adopts them because everybody's just stuck in the old way of doing it. So don't like underestimate that when you are inventing a new product, like getting somebody to overcome the, the way they've done it their whole life is going to be really hard. And the way you solve that is you, frankly, you have to be the best in the world at one thing. And so that's kind of what's influenced how we've developed our value proposition, how we've developed our product is we are just flat out the easiest way in the world to hire a lawn mowing service. We don't, hook you up with a maid. We don't fix the roof. We're not a locksmith. We're not a plumber. It is the easiest way to get a lawn mowing service. And so it's, it's that, it's that thrust of that value proposition that helps us like educate the masses that this is an easier way to get this done. And so, you know, when you're competing in like a hyper competitive space, whether you're inventing a new product or entering a, a vertical where it's already established and you're just going like head to head, mm -hmm. uh, you have to really look at your value proposition and understand like, if I am your ideal prospect, why would I use your product over anything else? and really just punch that up as much as you can and be honest with yourself and listen to your users. And you'll never wonder what you need to work on if you're listening to customers and users. So get hyper-focused until you can be world-class at that one thing. Better than anybody else. And that could mean that you've got the best coffee shop on the block, or it could mean that you're inventing a new type of beverage that people want to drink in the morning. Like, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Like, business, like, all these fundamentals are, like, the same at every level. And you have to just be the best in your market to, to to win. And, and that's the one of the things I love about business. It's a relentless feedback machine to make you better. For the entrepreneurs who are going through their own poop moment right now, if you had to give one piece of advice going into 2021, what would that be? Yeah, it's hard because, you know, you, you, you say you own a restaurant and you got 20 grand a month in rent and, you know, you're making gross $10,000 or something, you know, I mean, what are you going to tell that guy or gal, right? <laughs> Except for try to try to get them to understand that like it's, this is not happening to you, it's happening for you. In a crazy way, five or 10 years from now, as a business owner, you are going to be glad it happened. And I think like to live an interesting life, you have to have an interesting storyline. And for, for most of us business owners, like your business can be that storyline. Every hero in a story goes through some sort of trials and tribulations. They took on risk. They overcame conflict to get something they wanted. And so if you can look at it almost like this is your part of the story that you're going to look back on 10 years from now. And like, that's when I got through that, that, that pit of despair and I got, I got to the promised land and I got, and I conquered it and I, and I, and I got what I wanted and I got what my team wanted. And so 
like if you can look at it through that lens, like reframe it, I know that's not going to help you make rent this month, but it can be a thing to kind of manage your own psychology to understand that like, it's not, it's not happening to you. It's happening for you. And it's also, I think in business at any stage of the game, it's not what you're going to get. It's what you're going to become. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, going through this as the business owner, as the leader, you know, whether it's one employee or a hundred, you're going to become a, a wiser, better, more humble, just overall more interesting person if you can get through this. And the way to win is just to not give up. I love it. It's not happening to you. It's happening for you. Yeah. And, I, you know, none of these are my own original ideas. These are just things that I have picked up in 20 years of yep. business and like made my own kind of philosophy that helped me get through through times like these. Where uh, where can our listeners stay in touch with you, Brian? LinkedIn's a great way to get at me. I just started re-engaging with LinkedIn. Instagram's a great. Twitter, Brian M. Clayton on those. And then anybody that's listening to this that doesn't want to waste their time cutting their grass, they can just download Green Pal in the App Store or the Play Store. You get hooked up with a great lawn mowing service in less than a minute. Thank you for coming on the show, Brian. It's been such a pleasure to get to know you. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. All right. And for our listeners, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. At Harmon Brothers, we're known for what we call our hero campaigns. These are big nationwide campaigns for brands like Squatty Potty, Poopery, Purple Mattresses, Lumi Deodorant, and many others. What makes these campaigns special is that they've helped scale those businesses by tens of millions of dollars each. Now, companies reach out to us on a regular basis wanting a hero campaign. They want that type of growth, they want that type of branding, and they want that type of awareness. But the simple reality is, most businesses and entrepreneurs aren't yet quite ready for that level of growth. So we've built what we call a hero incubator that is designed to help entrepreneurs and companies prepare for a hero campaign and to be ready for the type of growth that they're looking for. The hero incubator starts with a marketing audit. We offer these marketing audits for free and you can apply for one at harmanbrothers.com forward slash audit.